Um, I want to thank you all for joining us. As Verna said, my name is Stacy Heston. I'm the Field Services Manager for Polaris Laboratories. I've been in the industry in, in maintenance specifically for about 10 years in, and have experienced oil analysis for probably about the past seven. I actually got my start at a construction company. I'm in San Antonio, Texas, where I, I worked there as their PM uh, manager for their equipment fleet, as well as an equipment analyst, um, looking at a lot of the data, the oil analysis data, and applying that to some reliability-centered maintenance type practices. And then after that, I spent uh, about three years with Noria Reliability Solutions um, as a technical consultant, where I worked with a lot of different companies over a, a vast number of industries and kind of help them develop their lubrication program. Um, you know, not looking only at just oil analysis, but you know, their, their lubricants and their greases as well, but help them kind of implement uh, those types of things where they could utilize oil analysis. I have recently acquired um, my certification as a certified lubrication specialist through the Society of Tribologists and Lubrication Engineers. That's most, I have other you know, certifications as well, but that is definitely probably the more the, the toughest one to, to try to accomplish, so I was very happy about that. So just, just a little bit about me, so you know that I do have a lot of experience, and uh, you know, from there, let's talk about today's agenda. Some of the things that we're going to try to cover as far as um, how it relates to oil analysis within the next hour. Now we're going to do a little bit of an introduction about what oil analysis is, how it got its start. Then we'll talk about what it can tell you um, and how it relates to the machine. We're going to go into some of the basic testing and, and how, of course, also how that applies. Uh, taking those test results and then applying the data and then taking that data and applying it to different types of maintenance strategies. So as far as oil analysis, it actually began a little bit after World War II um, within the railroad industry where they were using chemical type testing, just basic wet testing of their oil to determine where metals that were taking, that were being generated within their, their engines. And this occurred about the time that it, they went from the steam locomotives over to diesel powered locomotives. And then after about two to three years, around 1946, um, they were able to detect their first issue, their, their first amount of, you know, they had generated enough wear metals that they could detect an actual failure getting ready to occur. Well, after this had been in place for a while, eventually the U.S. Navy got involved and they began doing some research so that they could start adopting this type of wear metal analysis. And then from there, around 1958, the first in-house laboratory was put into production. And it was actually a Pacific Intermountain Express, it was a, a trucking company that wanted to start looking at their wear metals within some of their on-road fleet. And they, so they put into place their own uh, laboratory where they were doing tests internally. Around 1960, the first independent laboratory went into production. They're still open today. So they kind of brought uh, oil analysis to the masses, if you will, so where different industries could get involved and start utilizing oil analysis. But basically, you know, over the, the last uh, 70 years or so, oil analysis has gone from just detecting wear metals into looking at also lubricant health as well as detecting contamination. So not only are we, we looking at any type of wear metals being generated to predict failure, we're looking at the lubricant health so that we can look at extending oil drains and from there, you know, also detecting those contaminants so that we can you know, extend the life of the component and extend the life of the lubricant. So again, there was initial focus on wear metals um, and monitoring evolved to, you know, include, you know, the additive contaminant metals, the contamination, the lubricant properties. And basically, you know, who can use oil analysis? Well, it fits a wide variety of applications in different industries. If you have something that has oil in it that's lubricated, you can do some testing on it to find out what's going on internally within that component. So now we're going to touch a little bit on, you know, specifically what is oil analysis and what it can tell you. So now oil analysis basically is the use of a variety of different laboratory tests and we use it to monitor the lubricant health, the equipment health, and any type of contamination that's going on. It's just, just basic testing to do prediction. Now, when we're talking about uh, the lubricant health, we're looking at changes in the lubricant properties, you know, such things as viscosity. Uh, viscosity is going to be one of the more important properties of lubricant. In fact, when you're 
starting to use a lubricant, when you're deciding what lubricant to use in a component, you look at the viscosity first before you look at anything else. Because as long as that viscosity is properly selected, it is going to be able to lubricate that component correctly. Now, when we're doing testing, we're checking to see if that viscosity is still within spec. If it starts to thicken up or if it starts to thin out, this can reduce the fluid's capability of providing proper lubrication to that component. If we're talking about a component that has really small clearances and the viscosity gets too thick, it can start to starve the component, which can cause a failure. Other things that we look at, you know, we're looking at additive metals. Um, these are the elements within a lubricant that give it its some additional lubricating properties. Uh, and we look at such elements as magnesium and calcium, uh, barium, phosphorus, zinc, and even silicone. And depending on the particular product, it gives us an indication. We, we'll see different types of elements being used. So we monitor these to ensure that those elements are where they should be from uh, a specification standpoint, and also to ensure that we're not doing any type of lube mixing. Uh, some additives, um, if you have like a hydraulic oil that has anti-wear properties and you mix it with a, a turbine type of oil or an oil that has rust and oxidation inhibiting properties, the additives can interact and actually cause damage to the component uh, because of how they're formulated to work. So we can actually detect lubrication mixing um, utilizing oil analysis. And you know, when that occurs, there's usually a recommendation to do an oil change just to prevent any type of further damage. Other things that we look at as far as the lubricant health itself is going to be a, the total acid number and the total base number. Now, depending on the specific type of component and the fluid being used, you will use one or the other, but typically not both. Uh, when we're looking at the acid number, we're looking at the total number of acids uh, that are being um, formed or you know, reacted, the chemical reaction within that fluid. And as the number of acids begin to build up, we will eventually start to see oxidation, which is when the viscosity of the fluid will start to thicken up because the fluid is degradating. Uh, the base number measures the ability of that lubricant to continue to neutralize acids. So we're watching that number to make sure that the lubricant can still fight off the attacks that the acids are causing. And this is the number that you're going to want to look at specifically if you're wanting to extend oil drain intervals. We also want to look at the equipment health. And this involves looking at different elements as well. And this, at this point, we're typically looking at the wear metals or the, the types of elements that compose the alloys that components are made out of. We'll look at such things as iron, chromium, nickel, aluminum, aluminum copper, lead, tin, cadmium, and of course silver and medium. Now, we don't necessarily look at one specific element. We want to see a combination of these elements that are indicative of the specific alloy in the system. Um, and as we see those trends upward, we can get a good idea of what specific component is wearing. And of course, this can identify small problems before a serious amount of damage starts to occur. And it can also be utilized to predict failures. And in some more advanced cases, you can actually take this type of um, information and correlate it to past failure information and start to predict, I know that in X number of hours, this component is going to fail based on the current trending. So you know you can always do those repairs to that component before the failure takes place. Now, other things that we're looking at when we're talking about oil analysis and is contamination. Contamination is typically the particles that get in from outside the component and then they get inside the component. Eventually, if you get too many types of abrasives, um, those will start to cause the, the internal wear of the component, especially if they're very abrasive. But typically, the, some of the things that we're looking at as far as external uh, types of contaminants, we'll, we'll get that information through the elemental analysis and we'll look for things like silicone, sodium, and potassium and even aluminum. Um, now, if we're having high particle counts, you know, there might be a recommendation to change a filter or to do some type of a repair, depending on the specific types of elements that we see. We also do tests that will look for water. Water in, a, in an oil is, is typically not a good thing because it acts as a catalyst for oxidizing the fluid. 
and, and that can actually cause a, you know, definite issues with the lubricant properties that we are also trying to monitor. We'll also test for fuel dilution, um, especially when, you know, when we're talking about an engine. Uh, fuel dilution, you know, if you get too much fuel within a, an engine, it will start to thin out the lubricant and you won't get the same type of fluid film that is required to adequately lubricate that system and it can increase the amount of wear that's taking place. We'll also do testing for soot. Soot is typically, um, you know, uh, only in, in engines will we, will we see that for the most part. And they're little hard carbon particles that tend to be very abrasive. When it becomes too high of a concentration within that fluid, it will start to do a lot of abrasive damage as well. And so it tends to um, relate back to some type of a, another maintenance task that needs to take place, some type of a repair to make sure that we're saving that component before it fails. Now, all this information together, we can use it to determine the effectiveness of the current maintenance strategy. We can also use it to move towards a different type of maintenance strategy. You know, if we're in a current run to failure mode, we can see this information and say, hey, let's start doing some some work up ahead, of, you know, up front to determine, to, you know, kind of eliminate having to put out the fires from unexpected failures. Um, it can be used to move more towards a preventive type maintenance where we're, we're preventing the failures from happening and, again, move towards perhaps a predictive type of maintenance uh, strategy where we're making the repairs before the failure occurs. We're making minor repairs as opposed to major repairs.